speaker today is Catherine Nimla. She's a physical therapist here full time at the clinic, Courage Community Clinic here in Prescott. And um, she's going to be telling you a little bit about herself and then opening it up to questions. I think. Okay. Thank you for having me. So I kind of made this into an FAQ section because I wasn't sure exactly what to talk about. Um, so these are frequently asked questions that I hear from patients. And then if there are any other questions you have at the end, please well, Why don't you tell us a little bit about your background, where you grew up and education? Sure. Those are some of the questions. <laughs> okay, so the first one is, what is a physical therapist? PTs are movement specialists. We're good at diagnosing what might be limiting your movement, whether that be weakness or pain or uh, muscle tightness or dizziness. We work on work injuries, sports injuries, um, um, just general pain. We work on vertigo. And we also rehab from uh, if you've had surgery. So those are all things that we can help with. Uh, what training do physical therapists complete? So PT school is three years, and it's a graduate program after you get your bachelor's degree. And so I went to the College of St. Scholastica in Duluth for both my undergrad and grad school. And I graduated in 2013. And the third question that I get is, where did you work before starting at Courage Kenny in Prescott? And I started in February of this year. So I've only been there for however many months that is. You guys can do the math. Uh, so I traveled a lot after I left Duluth. Between my clinical rotations and uh, my traveling therapist assignments, I was a traveling PT, I lived in Eureka, California, and then Las Vegas, Nevada, and then Spokane, Washington, and then I was in Fairfield, Iowa last year, and now I'm back home almost. I didn't grow up in Prescott, which uh, the next question is, where did you grow up? I grew up in a small town in the quintessential Minnesota family. Uh, Cocado, if anyone's heard of Cocado. Okay. So we had a hockey rink in the backyard, and we had a lot of strong Finnish traditions growing up. So I'm back home. I live in the Twin Cities, but, uh, and let's see. The last question that I hear is, what would you do if you weren't a physical therapist? And my answer is, I would be a park ranger at a national park, or an engineer of some sort. So, that's kind of me in a nutshell. Uh, are there any questions? Have you, have you converted to being a Packer fan yet? <laughs> Keep trying. Actually, we were never really big football fans growing up. Hockey was kind of winter. But I have a hard time keeping track of who's a Packer fan. So you are a Packer fan. <laughs> when I cross the border, yeah. I'm not fair with their fans, so technically, whoever is winning. Sarah mentioned you guys were getting, you're adding another physical therapist. Yeah. Um, you're getting more, you've been busy. So, what are some of the things that is keeping you guys on your toes and are getting more uh, people in the CU? Uh, Wait, can you ask that again? What? I just. Sir, I mentioned that they were hiring other physicists or physical therapists because yep. you're really busy. So, what things are keeping you really busy over there? Uh, a mix of everything. I don't know. I mean, like what types of patients? Yeah, or patients, see? or what kind of injuries you're having, what uh, kind of work you're doing. I guess the in Prescott, we see a lot of people who ha who are deconditioned, a little bit weak, um, with the older population here. But it's a good mix of. Uh, children, sports injuries, all the way up to adults who are just, you know, getting normal aches and pains. And then I feel like they come in waves, so we get a good mix though. Rural, rural places do that. 
Yeah, I would imagine that in your job that part of it would be emotional, or how do you get through to people to, um, of course they need to do what you're telling them to do, but some of it has to be pep talk or Definitely. coaching or mm -hmm. like. Uh, I, I've had my fair share of injuries and I don't know in what condition I would be if I didn't become a PT. So I think I can relate on some level, be having injuries frequently, <laughs> unfortunately, but uh, so sometimes I can relate in those ways. Sometimes it's like I've had exactly what you have and it wasn't easy, uh, but kind of coming down to the level, the pace that they're at is, yeah, sometimes that's necessary and that's a huge part of people improving, I think is allowing that time, allowing that pause, and just to figure out what way can we connect and what way can uh, this make the most sense for both of us. Yeah. What drew you to physical therapy? What's that? What drew you to become a physical oh, therapist? Oh, um, this is not really an inspiring story at all. <laughs> um, I never needed PT. As a kid, my sister-in-law was an occupational therapist. When I was uh, 16 or 17, she, I was looking into engineering, and she said, Catherine, you should look into physical therapy. It might be a little bit more exciting. Uh, and so I did, and then I was just like, OK, I'm going to do that. And then once I was in college, I actually really liked everything that we learned. So I think it was more inspiring once I started working. One of my sons, when he was in 4K, um, struggled with writing, and they had a lot to do, they said, with his core strength. And so he was referred to an occupational therapist, which really kind of surprised me. What's, what's the main difference between occupational therapy then versus a the physical therapist? That is a good question. They do have kind of a gray area that's hard to distinguish. Sometimes people could see either an OT or a PT, perhaps, for whatever they're dealing with. A lot of times if it's the, the upper body, both the PT and OT can help. Um, occupational therapists a lot of times work with kind of the things to take care of yourself day to day, and then PT kind of takes it beyond that. Uh, bigger body movements, walking. A lot of times OT is working on, you know, how can you dress yourself and feel okay with that, feel pain-free. But it's sometimes it's hard to distinguish because we work on a lot of the same things. The same training, similar training? Uh, OT school is a little bit less time, and it's a master's degree, but NPT is a doctorate degree. Anything else? Yep. When, when you leave at night, what makes you have a good day when, you're, when you've left here? the office? Uh, what has happened during the, the day? When I don't have to talk on the phone to anyone. <laughs> uh, really when the day goes smoothly, but when people are getting better, and usually people are in good spirits if they're improving from physical therapy. So that makes my day better, that makes their day better. I'm surprised at how much it can affect me when cumulatively there are, you know, there are days that just some people aren't getting better at all. I don't, I think those days are rare, but that can make a day not so good. But what, what percentage of people do exactly what you tell them and how many? <laughs> <laughs> pretty low. <laughs> but like, there's a number at week one and there's a number at week 10 and that number increases a lot. The more convincing that we get uh, um, at having people do things. <laughs> yeah. Are you working uh, with the nursing home residents? Do you, do you, do you guys do business with them? No, we're just outpatients. The, the clinic in Prescott, and then we do weekends at Regina. Okay. We kind of rotate with the staff, and he's so you guys aren't open on weekends. Correct, we're not. 
is it a hard fight with the insurance companies, or are they pretty good at thinking? Mm, it depends. Some, it is. It's kind of exhausting to the, the paperwork, the, the phone calls, and others. It's fine, and we get as many visits as we need. So it varies from company to company. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there are three things that you could lecture and we would do to take care of ourselves as we leave the door that would make your job easier as a physical therapist. Mm -hmm. What would you do? Uh, that is a great question. Uh, stretch every day. <laughs> I know that's not realistic. Uh, I think we deal with a fair amount of injuries related to poor posture. Mm -hmm. So that could be a pretty, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that would probably be the one that, yeah. Can I add? Yeah. Don't yeah. smoke. <laughs> Smokers feel like crud. Okay, that <laughs> makes our job really hard. <laughs> and exercise. Mm -hmm. Number one prevention for almost any disease process, including injuries. Good answers. <laughs> I'm not on the spot. It's easy back here. <laughs> we could put her on the spot. How is it working with Sarah? <laughs> not good. No comments. There's days we don't talk no. <laughs> Anything else? Yeah. What kinds of equipment or tools do you use? Uh, so I guess the main thing that we need for our job is a mat for the patient to sit on or lay on when we're working on them uh, to do a lot of hands-on stuff. We also use these uh, tools to work on soft tissue. They're called Graston tools. I don't know if any of you have heard that name before. Uh, and then, other than that, we use a lot of exercise equipment, normal things that you'd see in the gym. You went to SNAP or the Y. Uh, and then there are a few different modalities that we use to help for pain control or healing, such as ultrasound, electrical stimulation, if any of you have had that, I'm guessing a few of you may have. So that's occasionally something that we use in the clinic as well. How effective is that? Um, it's not something that we really heavily rely on in physical therapy. It can help in some scenarios, but I find that we tend to use more of uh, exercise combined with manual hands-on treatment. So what does the electricity stimulation do? Does it just kind of loosen the muscles, or what's the idea behind using it? It depends on which type of electrical stimulation you're using. Uh, some of them are simply for pain control. The idea is that it kind of interferes with the pain signal to the brain. And so for some people, that's honestly the best option, you know, if they're not wanting to go uh, the medication route. If they've kind of exhausted other options. Uh, some types of electrical stimulation can help reduce inflammation. And so that can be a helpful tool if somebody's just had surgery and they're super inflamed or an acute injury and we can't manage it with just ice, then we might try the Easton. Does it hurt? Like, do you feel No, it? it just feels weird. You don't turn it up too high. Okay, there are some that you can adjust. My brother came home from college with one of those and we could adjust it. We're talking like a TENS machine? <laughs> What? That's that's one that they use for pain control. Mm -hmm. We also use it sometimes for strengthening, um, and that's where you really crank it up to the point where you get a muscle contraction. Is that what you did? <laughs> <laughs> sometimes we use it though if you know if somebody has a really weak quad muscle after an ACL repair and they're not even able to contract their muscle on their own, then we might use the Easton to help. It's kind of fun to watch. <laughs> fun for everyone. Yes, it is. <laughs> I had a look up tonight. Acupuncture needles on. And there's probably a question for both of you, too. 
over the years as you go through the shows, you see all these different types of exercise machines. It used to be just like the treadmill and all the elliptical, but there, there's probably like 45 different things that you could get to do crunches and sit-ups and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Are there, do you see people coming in who've hurt themselves because they're using certain exercise machines or does that become a chill, does it make your job more difficult because all those things are out there? Yeah, I think some exercise fads, if you will, can cause problems. Uh, especially if a machine if that's working Let's say you said crunches. It's like, why not just do crunches? Or I don't know. But yeah, I think certain fads or certain machines or things that people see on an infomercial, they buy them and then they get thrown off, get injured by that. Remember the shoes the one side of the certain shoes that were Oh yeah, there were a lot of injuries. <laughs> there were, yeah, those, several people were falling. With those people didn't follow the wear instructions. Also, they were wearing them as shoes, and you were supposed to just wear them for walking for a half hour, hour a day. When you wear them all day, then your back hurts. And things like that keep us in business. <laughs> <laughs> oh, any other questions? Sure. As your field learns and modernizes, are there any older techniques you're glad to see go? Uh, she's I too young. <laughs> too young. I've only been working for five years. I think they used to rely more heavily on some of the machines. I don't know. Did they? Have you yes. seen that? Yes. It was. Um, it was mostly out of the good clinics weren't using machines much anymore mm -hmm. by the time I graduated and I've been practicing gosh six, 16 years now um, yeah I don't there I mean everything that we've been doing even since I graduated has been based on research which was not done in the past. So it's pretty scientific now, what we know works and doesn't work, but that gets refined all the time. We have some better tools now than we did before. There's some better tapes. You guys have seen some better tapes. Getting you know, all the professional athletes and Olympians all taped up. And, um, but a lot of the science is old. It's just being applied with a little bit of technology. In the end, though, you got to move. What are your opinions on the like the rock tapes and the the athletic tapes that they're using now? Does it? Because I've seen a lot of articles of both sides of the yes, this does help, or whether it's really a um, they call it a placebo effect or whatever. Too. I like to use them, but I don't like to rely on them. That's my opinion. I think they can be helpful, especially in the beginning stages. I don't know. Do you, I think I use tape. <coughs> I tell people it's a really great tool. The research is good on them when it's used correctly. Um, but I tell people that I don't want it to be a long-term solution. It's, it's to be pretty expensive. The good tapes aren't all that cheap, and skin doesn't hold up well to it long-term. So it's a good get you where you need to be, but we need to figure out a better solution than taking the rest of your life. It almost becomes a fashion accessory for some people. <laughs> Any more questions? You got one over there. Do you have a specific injury that you really hate to work on with people, or the opposite one that you really love to work on and that you specialize in? Uh, I really like working on vertigo and dizziness, and foot issues. I don't know. I like the foot and ankle. Sounds really nerdy. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if there's anything I hate. I think when I just have too many of the same thing, then I get sick of it. But yeah, I don't hate anything too much for any of you. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything else. <laughs> Yes, and there'd be a lot of questions, and there were, and thank you yeah, very much for coming. Thank you.